What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode 17, Dirty 30. Um, before we get into the review, y'all already know my regular church announcements. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so just yet. Don't forget to let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Um, also, if you are not following me on any of my socials, they are down in the description box below. Please do so. Auntie was showing up. Appreciate it. Um, y'all, no wine again today. I am on my tea once again. I got some wild berry tea. I like different kinds of tea, like, uh, y'all, auntie not feeling good at all, but I'm thugging it out. And wouldn't it be so damn ironic? I'm on a week vacation from work. As I'm on this week vacation from work, I get sick. That would make sense that would make a whole lot of sense but i'm feeling a lot better than i was feeling i'm not as bad i just feel kind of wore down like ugh, just wore out my hands are dry because i keep washing my hands every time i get up and go to the bathroom i'm washing my hands i got sanitizer i don't already went through like a bottle and a half already of sanitizer just because i don't want my husband and my son to get sick so i've been thugging it out thugging it out but Last night's episode of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, it was pretty good. I actually thought it was going to be the season finale. I was hoping it was going to be the season finale, but it wasn't. We still got a whole nother episode of this, <laughs> of this crap here to go. Y'all, but last night's episode was really good. You know what I'm saying? It was good. It was entertaining. So um, hopefully you guys are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. So y'all, y'all at the radio station. She's there. She's promoting her new album that she's got coming out, her new single that she's got coming out. She's also celebrating 30 years being in the game as well as um, her birthday month or something like that she's celebrating so she's doing like this whole all together single release birthday slash i'm still up in that thing 30 years later west coast lbc little you know shindig or whatever get down kickback that she's having to kind of reintroduce herself or whatever right so she's at the radio station she's promoting herself at the radio station she's got her mom and she's got her sister i mean not her sister her daughter is there with her of course we know her oldest daughter is at the house with baby kai because you know she had the baby that baby's so damn cute but um you know, she's kind of going on the road. She's, I'm not going on the road. She's doing like radio promotion or whatever, like promoting her new shindig that she's got going on right now. Of course, she's saying she don't want no drama added, but yet and still she invites everybody to it. And I'm like, yo, yo, girl, now you know, you invited all them birds to that party. You know, some shit gonna pop off. That's just what they do. Birds like drama and you invited all them birds. So girl, just wait on it. It's gonna be some shit. So Tierra and Marie is in the studio. Tierra and Marie sounds good. I want that's who that's somebody I want to see win. I want to see her come out with a new album, shock the shit out of everybody, get there, hit them notes, and shut all the critics, shut Fifty down, do all of everything that she got to do. I want to see Tierra and Marie win because she done been through it all. Goddamn it! So she in the studio working on the little EP or whatever. Paris is already there. Miss Nikki baby show up. I don't like Miss Nikki Baby, but I love Miss Nikki Baby. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with her. She dresses her ass off. Her hair is always on point. Makeup is on point. We already know she's plastic as plastic could be. And she likes to start little drama. She likes to throw little shady-ass jabs. But that's what I don't like about her, and that's what I love about her all at the same damn time. So she goes there at the studio, and then Apple Watch ends up showing up, whatever, right? So they all in there, and they talking, because Apple Watch and uh, Miss Nikki Baby wasn't at the... Um, Zell's party that had went on the night before when um A1 slapped shit out of Mr. Ray for saying that he wasn't the baby of Baby Ocean, Lyrica's baby, right? So Paris and Tierra Marie is hipping Nikki Baby and a uh, Apple Watch as to what went on and what happened, whatever, right? Now everybody is in, you know, feeling indifferent about how A1, or just A1 smacking the shit out of Mr. Ray in the first place. Now, in some ways, I'm on, like, Paris and, and Apple side. Like, you can't pick and choose who you get to smack the hell out of, depending on what they say, because they reminded us on last season when, um, what's that dude name? I can't think of that dude name for nothing. Y'all know the dude that I'm talking about 
that he was like old friends with A1 and child, y'all know who I'm talking about. He was the one that claimed he had slept around with Lyrica. He ain't smacked shit out of him. He ain't smacked shit out of Safari nor Ray J when they said the same thing, when they were saying the same crap about Lyrica. You know what I'm saying? But he decides to smack shit out of Mr. Ray. But at the same time, I kind of feel Tierra Marie. You need to watch what the hell you say. You need to, you know, say what the hell you mean. You you need to be prepared for certain backlash to happen when you say certain things about people, especially when you're talking about people, kids. I'm not to smack the hell out of you too. You say something about mine. That's just me though. We ain't talking about me. So Apple Watch does tell them that she ended up getting Mr. Ray and A1 to meet up and for them to, you know, apologize. Now she does tell him how Mr. Ray had to get his little get back or whatever. He threw his drink on A1 and how it landed on her ass once again. Now of course they ask her, did you keep that same energy with him? Like you kept up with me. That's what Paris was saying when you got pissed off and I got a drink when I, you know, trying to hit Brittany with the drink, but I hit you. Apple Watch was like, man, at this point, I, I'm sick of the shit. I'm standing out of every goddamn body thing. Paris is funny. Paris said, we need to call your ass towel because you always catching drinks. That was goddamn funny though. Made my head laugh. I mean, made my head hurt because I was laughing. Y'all, I'm thugging it out. I'm thugging it out. But, Apple Watch tells them that, you know, she was able to get them to meet up and that they apologized to each other. And so they was able to kind of bury the hatchet from there. And so she does also say that Mr. Ray told A1 about how him and Apple was hanging out with Lyrica and how Lyrica got a phone call from some dude and how she said that was her little splack of belly or whatever, her dude that she was messing around with. And basically how A1 wasn't tripping on the shit. He was like, you know what? I understand. Let's get back for, you know, what the hell I did. I can't be mad at her, you know, for doing what, you know, she felt like she had to do when me and her was going through our things, right? Now, afterwards, Tierra says that she wanted Nikki Baby and Apple Watch to meet up so they can do some type of business together. What kind of business? She don't know, but she know that they two badass boss bitches so they can link up and do some. Girl, you know, first I was like, Tierra, what is you talking about? But then again, you know, Nikki does have all the ins and outs to all the script clubs, you know what I'm saying? So maybe she can show Apple Watch where them dollars at and how, you know, what's the best clubs she can booty scoot across the ground on and, and get the most dollars at, you know what I'm saying? Because other than that, what they gonna put out? A, a album together? <laughs> a EP? What the fuck? Britney B is meeting up with Black China. Black China still on this whole thing about her 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 rap album and how you know she wants to get better at her craft and how she wants to work on it more so she can hone in more on her skills and all that. Black China, girl, after that one bop, you little had popped that pussy like a pistol. We not checking for you like that, boo boo. No, ma'am. And then after you done did, stay over there on the Zeus Network, cause you you girl, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. So, of course, Brittany B couldn't wait to bring up Lyrica. At this point, I'm sorry. I feel like Lyrica is obsessed. I mean, I'm sorry. I feel like Brittany B is obsessed with Lyrica. But I don't know if this is her only storyline. So, she feels like she has to bring Lyrica up every chance and every opportunity that she gets. But she steady brings Lyrica up and it gets on my nerves. At this point, like... And, you know, I had hope for you, Brittany B. I wanted to like you. I really, really did. Because you're a beautiful, chocolate, brown-skinned girl. But it's your attitude and it's the things that you do that just make you so ugly. It just make you so, ugh. And just not want people to just, like, deal with you. And, ugh. So, she starts to go in on Lyrica. Basically saying how Lyrica was lying, saying that they was never cool. So... Brittany B says she went and posted all these old pictures on IG of her and Lyrica back in the day when they was hanging out and basically trying to call Lyrica out like, look here, we were cool. We were friends. Why are you saying we wasn't friends? Like, bitch, how old are we? Why does that even matter? It, it, it's so what? So what? So her and Lyrica go back and forth on IG. Then Britney B hits below the belt because she then starts saying something about Lyrica's son. I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So Black China then tries to come up with the idea of maybe I should get you guys together. What do you guys think about us getting together and talking and maybe hopefully working the situation out? The thing with Britney B is... 
she's so butthurt and she's so childish that she's not going to be open to hear anything that anybody got to say. So child trying to talk to her is going to be like, uh, talking to a brick fucking wall. Then she tries to say something like, um, when Lyrica was coming back at her on Instagram that she was saying something about her complexion, she tries to make it seem like Lyrica is a is a colorist and all of this. Y'all, Love and Hip Hop is the only goddamn reality show that's talking about this colorist shit. Like, wow. Why is this a thing now? Why is this a storyline for everybody now? I can't get it, and I'm not going to get with it. I'm a dark-skinned chick myself. I mean, I'm not dark-dark, but hell, I'm, I'm dark-skinned. I don't give a damn about no remarks that people say about no shit like that. It don't make no sense to me. But you know what? That's neither here nor there. But like I said, Lyric is too butthurt and she too much in her feelings and she got too much of her own damn opinion to try to listen to anything that anybody else says. So a conversation between the both of them is going to be dumb and it's going to be pointless and it's just going to be it's the night of Yo-Yo's um, 30-year single release birthday party um bitch i'm back and i'm better <laughs> ep release party right and it's it's tight everybody there apple watch is there a1 and lyric is there um britney b is there of course because she's on the track that um uh, yo yo got and then who else was there Mickey Monday was there. Trisha, oh Lord, Trisha, when her goddamn ass was there. And of course, Trisha and Brittany B, they talking, they being messy because Trisha sees A1 and Lyrica walking in hand in hand. So she has to go be messy and go tell um, Brittany B that she's seen them coming in hand in hand. But she thought that Lyrica had a whole nother dude on the side. So what is she doing with him? Because she didn't think they were together. Girl, mind your business. That ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm just saying. So, yo, yo, <laughs> now, first of all, this was a classic Mona Young. <laughs> what is it? Mona Scott Young uh, uh, production. God damn it. It was all these extras and all these actors crammed in this little ass chicken joint slash bar lounge. And, you know, they jamming out to Yo-Yo song. She performs a song and the song is a bop. I like the song. That's the one damn baby one with the drum out. Don't make me pull up in the grass at your mama house. You know, it's a little bop that she got or whatever, right? So she's performing. She's doing good. Um, I will say the girl that was singing, the out of control, that part, ooh, baby. It sound like me drunk on a karaoke night singing that damn note right there. And that ain't a good thing, baby. That did not sound good at all. The hype man was in the front doing his, his, you know what I'm saying? He was a West Coast hype man. You know how they do. They finna get the crowd bumping and, and moving and grooving. It was a nice little old bop. You know what I'm saying? Britney B did her little part. It was okay. Again, Britney B is Britney B. It is what it is. And it was a cute little old scene of what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? They rocked the house. This next scene is when it gets weird. So, as Yo-Yo's coming off stage from uh, performing, somehow or another, Apple Watch says she gets a text message and she gets a <coughs> on her shoulder that Summer Bunny is downstairs and that Summer Bunny is, is looking to fight her again. So, apparently, Apple Watch and Summer Bunny got into a fight before. And so, uh, not Lyrica, but uh, Apple Watch, mind you, she's about 14 sheets to the wind. That's what she do. You know what I'm saying? Probably drink on some damn dark liquor. And because y'all done know, I done told y'all in previous videos, baby, dark liquor? No. Me and dark liquor make me want to go ass that bitch over there who's minding her business and ain't got nothing to do with nothing. What the hell she looking at? That's what dark liquor do. So I'm assuming that Apple Watch was on some damn dark liquor because that's the only liquor I can think of make you want to fight and snap like that. But she was ready to goddamn go off. And so next thing you know, Trisha comes over to Apple Watch and is trying to calm Apple Watch down. And then Yo-Yo got wind of Summer Bunny being outside. Apple Watch then goes to Lyrica in A1 and tells them about how Summer Bunny is downstairs and how she thinks Summer Bunny came there and want to get it cracking in front of the cameras. Baby, Apple Watch starts taking off her shoes. That's when I was like, oh, shit. It's really about to goddamn go down. So, Yo-Yo ends up um, 
my bad y'all i have to get comfortable in this damn chair yo yo ends up going outside and so she ends up talking to um summer bunny and it's like look here like what's going on i don't want no drama going on in my event now summer bunny is saying that yo yo is the one that invited her there now yo yo didn't say a definite yes or no whether or not she invited her she was just saying like look here i don't want no drama going on in my event tonight um you know because of that I'm just gonna need y'all to part ways. Like, stop all this foolishness. Ain't nothing that finna happen. Y'all gonna have to stop this old bullshit. And Yo Yo ends up going back in the party, and security basically tells Summer Bunny, like, you know, she can't get in. So I don't know if Yo Yo told her, look here, even if I did invite you, you can't come in. You finna have to move around, bounce, which then it pisses Summer Bunny off. Afterwards, she mad. She don't wanna be filmed no more. And she starts cussing out the cameraman, talking about, don't film me, bitch, like you ain't got two other cameras on you to your left and to your right <laughs> any damn way. Y'all, it goes left. Damn, um, what's my baby name? Apple Watch. Oh, my poor baby Apple Watch, girl. She rips her lace front off. I mean, y'all know Apple Watch is TTG. She wakes up, set trip. I mean, she wakes up ready to fight. She, she brushing her teeth, she ready to fight. Like, she ready to fight. That's just what it is. And so, in a lot of ways, I like Apple Watch. Because she's that home girl that ride or die. That, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to get your hands dirty. This bitch fit to do it for you. But then again, at the same time, Apple Watch, look here. Lyrica wasn't even as pressed as you was. Lyrica started getting crunk after she seen you get so damn crunk. And the only reason why you was damn crunk, really, I feel like because you was full of that liquor. Because had you been not so full of that liquor, you probably would have been like, you know what, fuck this bitch. I look too cute. I'm not finna get out here and do this shit. But then again, at the same time, this Apple Watch we talking about. And bitch, she, she, she eloped that gangsta trip. Bang, that's what she do. So, y'all, it was a whole little old fiasco. At the end of the night, Summer Bunny was not allowed in. They did not let Apple Watch go out there, no matter how many times she kept ripping that lace front off. And she was ready to go out there and get that bitch barefoot. No, they didn't let her ass go outside. And Yo Yo was pissed off because she was like, Look here, I didn't invite y'all out here to my event for the black shit. But then again, Yo Yo, girl. You already knew what she was getting yourself into. Ray J and Brandy in the studio, y'all. They doing a remix to uh, Best Friend. That was my jam. Know that you are my best friend. Do the good. That was my jam back in the day. So they doing a remix to the song, right? Now, Brandy, I love me some Brandy. I love me some Brandy. Me and her about the same age. I want to say probably I'm like a year older than Brandy. But I love me some Brandy. Brandy is <laughs> the best hype sibling you can have because the way she is hyping Ray J up baby I was here for it and I was loving it and it was so goddamn funny to me it was funny to me she was like the way you sing like your voice like the way you was on that note like I I know what you got and you know people need to see that we need to go on tour we need to remake Brandy and Ray J it needs to be Ray J and Brandy you know it used to be Brandy and then Ray J you know that's her little brother but now I want it to be Ray J and Brandy that's his sister you know what I'm saying baby it ain't gonna never be like that Brandy it's just not it's just not it's always gonna be Brandy and Ray J <laughs> But she's saying, she's asking him, like, what you got going on or, you know, what you doing this summer, whatever, right? He said he's possibly going to end up going on tour with Immature, which today, as a matter of fact, I've seen on Omarion's Instagram page. Oh, so he is actually launching a Millennium Tour 2020. It's going to be um, him versus Bow Wow. You know what? Fizz, you fucked all B2K out of a damn bag. You got replaced by Bow Wow, Fizz. Really? It's going to be Bow Wow. I think Sammy, Lloyd, Yin Yang Twins. Um, Let's say Pretty Ricky. Somebody else. Check this out. If they come to Texas, if they come to, hopefully they come to my city and state, Austin, Texas. Even if they come to Houston or Dallas, I think I'm going to go to that tour. I'm going to go to that tour. Just because. <laughs> just because. But Fizz. In April, let this be a lesson. Let this be a goddamn lesson. You know what I'm saying? We gonna leave it like that and leave it what it is. But he said possibly he's supposed to. Be, oh, and it's gonna be immature on there too. That's what it is. That's who I want to goddamn see. So he said possibly he's gonna end up going on tour with immature, which we later on see that doesn't happen. 
yeah, that don't end up happening. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother video. But, um, Randy then says that, um, she hopes that there's no hard feelings between her and Jerome because Brandy is the one that fucked up Jerome. Ah, you remember the light-skinned dude had the little hazel eyes? And I remember hearing about that back in the day. Child, Brandy says she was playing, fucking around with some kind of book, some Jehovah Witness book. I ain't never seen no Jehovah book, but from when I heard them, some big-ass books. Somehow or another, she was playing with the book, threw the book, and it ended up popping Jerome in the eye. Ray J talking about, yeah, I was there. I seen the whole thing go down. It was fucked up. I popping out and all this. So that's the reason homeboy started wearing an eye patch on his eye because Brandy done fucked up his eye. I said, damn. So it was true. Like, I heard about it, but you know, I, I, I heard about it, but I didn't think it was really true. Like, really? Because they made it seem like she, like, bam, like, knocked his eye out. And I know, girl, Brady little frail ass ain't knock nobody goddamn eye out. But now we see she knocked it out with a bug. That's fucked up. Ray J telling her, like, look here, chill. That was a long time ago. Ain't nobody tripping over that no more. Hopefully, if I get the opportunity to go on tour, y'all can talk about this shit face to face. Y'all can squash and it can be what it is. You know what I'm saying? But later on, like we say, we end up finding out that um he ain't going on tour with them. <laughs> Omarion just announced today that he is launching a Millennium Tour. And I know Jay Boog got to be pissed because Jay Boog was the original one that wanted to get immature and all of them in on this. But look like, um... Omarion was like, shit, I'm fit to get this bag, but you niggas ain't. Hmm. Later on, everybody starts to get this little notification that Apple Watch is going live, right? So Apple Watch, if y'all follow her on Instagram, y'all already know she gets wild on her Instagram page. So, and that time was no different. She was going live. She was drunk, going off, cursing. One minute she cursed and going crazy, the next minute she was crying drunk. But she was just going off. Like, everybody got the notification. Paris and Zells, Mickey Monday, Brittany B, Yo-Yo, like, Tierra Marie, everybody had got the notification. So, they, everybody was kind of, like, talking about it, right? So, then, later on, um, Tierra Marie, Miss Nikki Baby, and Yo-Yo, they all met up together because they were supposed to meet up with Apple Watch because they wanted to talk to her, just like let her know that you got people in your corner that love you, we rooting for you, anything that we can do to help you out. Here's what we're trying to do to help you. And you know, they just want to let her know like, hey baby, everybody's seen you spazzing out. What the hell is it that we need to do to help you? Because right now you're going out of control. You know, Tierra, Tierra Marie reminded us about how her friends were there for her when she was drinking a lot, going out of control, when she didn't think nothing was wrong. Miss Nikki, baby, she has personal, you know, feelings invested in this because, you know, her brother committed suicide because he was going through his own depression and his own, you know, mental demons and this that, and the other and then yo-yo just being like her coach and her mentor she wants to let her know like look here when i tell you i'm here for you this is what i mean but unfortunately apple watch didn't show up and in a way i kind of felt like she was gonna show she wasn't gonna show up because apple watch is a hard bitch and if you're trying to talk to her about something sentimental like that trying to do it on camera when she's most vulnerable that's not gonna be the good route to go with her and when it comes to that hollywood shit like that she ain't with all of that <laughs> so i didn't see her show showing up to nothing like that and if like when i seen them right when the scene was happening i was like oh no nah, apple watch ain't gonna show up to that mm -mm. she ain't there for that kind of shit she's not gonna do that and she did not show up but yo yo is basically saying the next time that she sees her you know the kid gloves are coming off she wants to come at her heart and she wants to let her know like look here i love you and bitch you need to pull it together you need to get it together because I'm trying to help you get to where the fuck you're trying to be in your career, but you steady ruin it and, and, you know, messing shit up for everybody. So, girl, come on. You need to get it together. So, Lyrica and Black China, they meet up for appetizers, whatever. Lyrica is telling her about the whole Summer Bunny situation, what happened at Yo-Yo's event when she popped up over there. Then, um, Black China brings up the whole thing about how she wants to work with Britney B. And this is what I like about Lyrica. Lyrica says she's very talented, although I do not like her, and I don't mess with her like that. She was able to give this girl a compliment. It wasn't no backhanded compliment, nothing that. She says she is very talented, but... I don't like her and I don't mess with her. That's all she said about her, right? Now, Brittany B, on the other hand, she ain't mature enough to make no damn simple ass comment or something like that. She got to take it all the way left. Now, China then suggests that maybe, you know, um, but before that, she suggests that maybe A1 and, and her go to therapy, this and the other. I'm like, China, here you go, suggest. Um, suggestion, um, suggesting therapy to people when your ass went to therapy 
And child, we have yet to see if any of that has worked for you, your damn self. But you know, it is what it is. I can't judge nobody on that shit. Some people will say I need therapy, but I've been there. Hell, mine's worked. I'm just saying that's a big old ass difference. But China says that she wants to be able to mediate a conversation with her and Brittany B. So hopefully they can come to some kind of common ground and hopefully they can squash the beef and bury the hatchet and be able to move on. Now, Lyrica does say that because Brittany B. brought up her son and said something about her son, that basically it's on sight soon as she see her. You know what I'm saying? Knuckle up, she gonna throw them things. Now, Black China's like, whoa, we don't need to do that. We should be able to talk it out, which is true. Anybody else will be able to talk it out. But she said something about her son. So, Lyrica was like, no, the hell with this bitch. Fuck this bitch. Soon as I see this hoe, it's gonna be on sight. And it is what it is. So, Lyrica and Black China, they show up to the restaurant. They waiting on Britney B to get there. Now, I'm guessing China must have gave Lyrica the impression that, or somebody must have put it in Lyrica's head, that she was coming there to have a civilized conversation. Lyrica claimed she was sitting back prepared to hear what she had to say, maybe hopefully get an apology out of her, but she was prepared to just sit back and listen to what she got to say, and it is what it is. Baby, Brittany B came through the door pissed off and ready to go. Soon as she came in, she was like, so what's up? You said it was on site, so what's up? What's going on? Here go Lyrica. Is what on site? Like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? That sounds like, er, no, hold on, time out, time out. Because Lyrica, you did say. Now, I don't promote no violence. This is a no violence zone. But at the same time, you did say it was going to be on site. But, like I said, somebody must have been up in Lyrica's ear, made her think that, you know, it wasn't going to be on site. Everything was going to be cool and copacetic or whatever the hell it was. So, child, Brittany B. old childish ass. <laughs> she going to tell Lyrica, you said it was on site. It was so dumb. Lyrica was like, yeah, and it's on site. It was so dumb. It was so dumb. Then Lyrica and Brittany B. start going back and forth about that, girl. It was so dumb. Child, next thing you know, Lyrica pulled a Carly Red and shook the table. I was like, bitch, I am done. Give me my tea. I can't do this no goddamn more. Child, she shook the table, like pushing it, like she's going to push it towards Brittany B. So I guess she can push it back and get a running start over there with her goddamn security was so damn on her ass, so goddamn fast. It's like, bitch, was that supposed to be a distraction? What was that? What was that? Y'all, and the episode pretty much ended from there with Lyrica shaking the table <laughs> and security coming and breaking them up. Y'all, next week's episode is supposed to be the season finale, and I can't lie, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm so over and done with this season. Throw the whole season away. Everything was just pure D damn fuckery. But I am glad we did not have to see no segments of April and Fizz this episode. So that did make me happy. Now, if there was anything that I missed in this episode, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Keep Auntie Mo in your prayers because all of this right here is just kicking my ass. Woo, it's kicking my ass. But Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.